Hi everybody, it's Andrea over at SoSpire.com. Today I am here to show you how to make this adorable diaper clutch and minky back changing pad set. The diaper clutch will hold a package of disposable baby wipes and at least two diapers, maybe more depending upon the size. It has this great little wristlet strap so you can drape that over your stroller or carry it on your wrist. You can also loop this around the bag handle. You remember I released the diaper bag tutorial that goes with these accessories last week. So if you're interested in that, please check out my premium tutorials on SoSpire.com. The changing pad that accompanies this has a coordinating accent panel and then a minky back that's very luxurious and so soft. This also doubles as a stroller blanket and that's very nice. I think it's so nice that the kids might even prefer it just to be their lovey and not their changing pad. But nonetheless, it makes a beautiful baby shower gift. Now, if you um, don't need a baby shower gift now, I'll give you a little tip. This will hold the iPad perfectly. So you could just make it in a more mature fabric and have a great little iPad sleeve. So this is our project for this week. Shall we get started? For this project, you're going to start with one piece of material, which um, measures three inches wide by 19 inches long and this is going to be used to craft the strap for the diaper clutch. So you're going to fold that in half and press that and then you're going to open that up and bring those raw edges in on the press line. and then fold the finished edges over to create a long strap and you're going to top stitch down that open edge just to close that up and create the strap. Now when I'm top stitching, I'm stitching as close as I can to the edge without going over. And now I have the wristlet strap finished, so I'm going to set that aside. For the interior of the diaper clutch, you're going to need one long piece of quilt weight cotton which measures 8 inches wide by 22 inches long. Just fold that in half long ways and we're going to stitch down either side reinforcing at the top and the bottom with a back stitch. And for this I'm using 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And now the interior is complete. You're just going to reach inside that open top and flip that edge over about a half an inch and you can set that aside as well. And then we're going to craft the exterior which is made from a, another coordinating quilt weight cotton that's 8 inches wide by 22 inches long and backed with some quilt batting that measures the exact same measurements. You're going to fold that in half and stitch the sides closed using the same 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Turn that right side out. Poke out those corners at the bottom and turn that top open edge inward a half an inch. And 
And then now holding down the side seam, go ahead and insert that interior lining. You're going to be lining up those side seams first. Go ahead and put a pin in that to hold it. And then come over to the other side seam and get that secure. And then you can position a pin in the center on the front and the back. And now the exterior and interior have been assembled and we're going to set that aside and create the exterior flap closure, which is crafted from two squares of quilt weight cotton, which measures seven and a half inches by seven and a half inches and one piece of quilt batting to the same measurements. You position the fabric right sides facing and then the batting goes on the bottom of that. I like to angle my corners a little bit. I do that by just folding the square in half and then trimming just a smidge off that corner. And that creates this nice little angle, which will be the bottom of the flap. So I'm gonna stitch all the way down the side, around the angle, across the base, up, and then back stitch at the beginning and the end. Going to leave that top open. Same 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. I've stitched all the way around. Now I want to flip this right side out. Poke out the corners. If you need to, you can press this flat. This looks pretty good, so I'm going to go ahead and top stitch all the way around to add some detail and further secure all of those layers. Okay, my flap looks good. Okay, so now I want to go ahead and install a portion of the snap, the decorative part, on the top of this flap before we insert that flap onto the exterior and the interior. And the snap is comprised of four pieces. There's the decorative top the male portion, the female portion, and then one other um, prong to secure that to the back of the project. So four pieces. I use a small hammer and a little cutting board to install my snaps. So using the de decorative top first, you're going to want to find the center point on your flap and I'm going to come up about an inch and I position that on there and then just poke out those prongs out the back and then the portion of the snap which I call the female portion with the little hole in it is going to go on top of those prongs and you want that nice and even and then you're going to give that a couple wax with the hammer and then that's nice and secure. Then go ahead and stick that part with the little nubby or the male portion inside of there and we're going to save this until we're ready to um, completely attach the snap. So just set that aside for a few minutes. And now this flap with the snap facing up, the decorative part, is going to get inserted in between. This raw edge is going to go in between the exterior and interior layers at the back of the diaper clutch.
And I've got that tucked in there a little over an inch. And I just want to make sure all the layers are even. You really want those top edges of the exterior and the interior to be even and the same amount of flap tucked inside. So you can measure that. To be sure, I'm going to go ahead and put a couple of pins through all the layers. And then I'll check my measurements. And I've got five and a half inches on this side and five and a half on that side. So that's good news. Now you're going to fold your strap that you created in half and tuck those raw edges inside between the flap and the exterior layers. It doesn't really matter uh, which side you attach that to. I'm attaching it to the left hand side, but it doesn't really matter. It won't affect its functionality at all. So that's what that looks like from underneath and on the back. And now what you need to do is fold that flap over Get that remaining piece of your snap and you want to use the prongs to poke little holes in that material so you can see where you want that snap to fall. So then you can just reach inside and bring those prongs up in that same spot. You can see how they're poking through there. And then take the rest of the snap and position that right on top. And you just want to feel that that's secure. And if it is, then you go ahead and hammer that in place. And let's see how that works. Perfect. You can see the snap is attached. And now the last thing left to do is stitch all of these layers in place. I'm just going to remove the machine deck and then slip this on the arm there. And I like to start at that side seam. You're just going to move slowly going all the way around the entire top edge. You may want to reinforce at the wristlet strap. And then, of course, you would use a back stitch at the beginning and the end. Okay, I've stitched all the way around. I just want to trim up these threads. Very good, it's so cute. I love the polka dots and the stripes together. Okay, now the diaper clutch is done. And now we want to make the coordinating minky back changing pad that goes along with this. So for this project, you're going to need one piece of fabric which measures 18 inches wide by 18 and a half inches long and one piece of cotton quilt weight fabric which measures eight and a half inches tall by 18 inches wide you're going to position align the 18 inch portion which is the width of both pieces and position those top edges together, right sides facing, and then you're gonna stitch or join those two pieces of material to create a larger piece of fabric, which will become the front of the changing pad. I'm joining these using 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, now I have the front of the changing pad complete. You're welcome to press down the seam at the iron. And you can open that up and press it open to get a nice 
flush area. I'm just going to fold mine over for time's sake. Now, then you're going to need your minky or dimple dot. This is just so luxurious and soft. Oh, it's wonderful. You're going to need an 18 inch wide piece by 26 inches long and the same size piece of quilt batting. It's very important that the quilt batting go underneath the minky dot because it's going to offer this minky some stability, which it is a very slinky, slippery fabric that will easily get away from you. And the trick to working with minky is using lots of pins. So go around the project several inches from the seam and position. Um, a fair amount of pins. I'm going to use six where you're capturing that under layer of batting and the minky just to keep this from shifting. I actually have eight pins in here. Okay. Then take the fabric that you just joined together and position that right sides down on top of the minky and the batting. So the right side of the minky and the right side of the fabric are facing and go ahead and put in at least six more pins. And for this I also put eight pins. So now you're going to stitch around three sides, two long ends and one short side. I'm going to leave this decorative um, short side open so that I can turn this around. You'll be using the 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and reinforcing with the back stitch at the beginning and the end. inside and out. Okay, and I think I've got them all so you can reach inside and flip that around and go ahead and poke out all those corners. And then take a quick look around and make sure that you did capture all the layers and that you don't have any holes in your project. You can trim up the excess threads and now you want to place this minky side down and just kind of smooth out that fabric. Okay, and this looks wonderful. Now take that top edge and fold it inward approximately an inch. And then go ahead and put some pins there to hold that in place. And starting with that open edge, you're going to top stitch. And you're going to move all the way around the entire changing pad. And I will probably stick with the 3 8 of an inch seam allowance for this top stitching. And I will be reinforcing with a back stitch at the beginning and the end. made it all the way around the edge. Now I just want to trim up those threads. And my changing pad is complete. Get that a little shake. 
looks great. I like to fold these in thirds like that and then present them with that little bit, little corner of minky popping out. You could take the diaper clutch, which we've got right here, and you could position that together in a little gift box. It's just a beautiful set. Makes such a nice gift, doesn't it? Maybe give them a little gift card with this. There's our train in the background. You hear that? Thank you for sewing with me. These um, are accessories which coordinate with my zip top diaper bag tutorial, which I released last week. That you will find for sale under the premium tutorial offerings on SoSpire.com. If you're up for a bigger project, I've created a comprehensive digital PDF tutorial which includes lots of photographs and clear, concise instructions. All of my written tutorials are geared for the visual learner. If for any reason you have any questions whatsoever, just send me an email or reach out to me on Instagram or Facebook, and I will be sure to get back to you um, with an answer just as soon as I can. So I will be back next week with another inspired sewing project. I'm not sure what it's going to be yet. I love to wait for inspiration to strike. So until then, please know the creative genius in me salutes the creative genius in you. Take care, y'all.